Once again, I am rolling together a couple of briefs here. So this was the black and the white prompt. They worked well going together. So I'm doing this sort of black and white scene. I was approaching this one a little bit differently to normal. Normally I have a fairly clear mental image of what I want. And in this case, I actually didn't really know what I was going for. I had a kind of theme in my head. I was thinking sort of Victorian London, a little bit kind of steampunky, film noir kind of vibes. But yeah, I didn't have like a specific composition that I was going for. So I started off by doing a little bit of a block out, added a cube, moved a few around, did a couple of little arrays just to test things. I actually cut that from the start of this video just because it's a brief little flash. But that let me set up my camera and give me a kind of a, a general process in, you know, where I was going to go, what would be my main compositional elements and what my main list of things would be. I had also used the text editor in Blender. Text editor inside a piece of creative software is such a good idea. Of course, I know most of the time it's going to be used for scripting, but as just sort of a pure artist, it's so useful just to be able to write a to-do list, just a list of ideas so that you don't forget them. Or, you know, even if you don't do them all in the end, there are certain things which I struck off, like the water tower um, and the smoke clouds, things like that. Just having that as like a, here are my options as you go into a project, that's a really useful way of working. So the process uh, essentially was, again, using my toolkit nodes, really just using the brick straight wall. It's really simple. If you don't want to use the toolkit nodes, it's really easy to make it. You can just do it with either a line, which you offset, or a grid where you offset every other row. It's the same math that you use in making brick textures and shaders. So really easy to set up. What I went for was a little modular bay, essentially like a single window, like a six over six sliding sash in a single block of bricks. And this could then be used on repeat. So I had a, a bunch that were turned into a single block that was sort of four by three, I think. Uh, so 12 windows. And then further down the street, I did a smaller one that was two by two. And then even further down the street, I did one that was a building that was slightly rotated. That was again, the uh, four by three. Then on the left hand of the street, I did just again, I literally just duplicated this whole wall section. Then went ahead and built some roof joists, put on some slates, and that was really all there was to it. Because I had set up the camera super early, it was really easy for me to only work to the camera. Now, there were still things which I did in addition to what was probably necessary. For example, I didn't really need to do the slates. I could have just put a grid, just like a plane on the surface, because it was all going to be in shadow. Now, I think I actually talked about this during the stream, about how you should do things like renders, test renders early on, rather than just rely on, you know, looking at it. Because as soon as you see something rendered with the correct lighting, the correct composition, the correct camera view, you suddenly become aware of actually what's important in the view. So I was just working through here and I ended up adding these sort of rounded or arched bits of metal work, I guess you'd call them. Uh, there's currently no poke faces, so I had to do a little bit of maths to get the axes across them. And this was one of those things that I was like, ah, I'm not sure if this is going to be visible, but I'm going to include it anyway, just because I knew that high angle camera was going to catch the roof, but I didn't know if it was going to actually see onto those joists. I also added a little bit of background detail with some little towers. Uh, it was not really uh, important really in the composition because everything is so blown out with the darkness, but I did want to include something to shine some lights in the background. Just to spice things up, I also included a recessed bay window on the ground floor next to the camera so that has the rounded grid of windows and that just adds a little bit of variation a little bit of reflection up close to the camera i wanted there to be cables and things spanning the street as well but i obviously didn't want cables actually coming off the windows so what i did is i arrayed a bunch of planes that filled the gaps in between the windows and i did these on both sides for all of the buildings and then if you've joined all of this together i can just use the wire flood node on that as one like as one block, and that's going to essentially string together the two sides of the street. So that's a nice easy way to work there. I did a similar thing just to instance on uh, pipes as well. So that was just a, a curved line which I instanced on all of the planes and then just did the curve to mesh to skin it. I wanted some more lighting because obviously black and white is going to be really dark and nighttime. So lighting is like the most important thing. So to bring in some lighting, I wanted there to be these sort of Victorian lanterns, hanging lanterns out on the street. And the method of making those is really simple. The cone node is so much more useful than the cylinder node. I've said this before about Sverchok, that the cylinder is just like such a great 
utility node because it has different radius top and bottom, different number of like cuts and things on the surfaces. So really useful node. And especially now that we have the output selections as booleans, that's really useful to be able to say, you know, remove the top or remove the bottom. The lanterns are basically made of two cones, which have a smaller radius at one end and a larger radius in the middle. And those larger radiuses both meet top one is shorter and I just removed the top face of the bottom one and the bottom face of the top one to make it a continuous void and then I did like a mesh to curve curve to mesh to make the actual connections with the window gaps in between. I put a little sphere inside which I can give an emissive material so that's my main light source and then I also wanted a hanging bracket so I did something very similar to the flower shop spiral staircase where I essentially just took a grid squeezed it down on one end put a bunch of points on it and did my points to Bezier node, which is essentially just converting a bunch of positions into a Bezier curve. If you then convert that to a mesh again, you can raycast it to check which one of those points fit within the base area that you want to crop it to. Then it's a simple case of just cropping. To do that, you just use the is hit, put it through a Boolean math so that where it is not a hit, and then use that as your selection on a delete geometry. Once you've only got the points in the area that you want, you can simply go mesh to curve and then once again curve to mesh to give it that thickness with the profile curve so nice and easy process making sure that i then like re-offset it so that it was on the origin rather than it being the lantern on the origin so that when i instanced it on the street i made sure to mask so that the right hand of the street was masking points that had the normal pointing towards the left and the left pointing towards the right so that way i could make sure that all of my lanterns were specifically on the street facing faces. It sounds a little bit complicated, but it's actually a very simple process. Uh, we got into having a little bit of a chat on stream about hostile architecture, things like putting spikes, uh, pigeon spikes, and yeah, doing stuff like that. And it turned into a bit of a thing where we just put spikes on everything. We also did ivy. So this doesn't really show up too much in the render, but it does actually add quite a lot of texture and it breaks up some of the edges to make things look more natural. So even if you don't see the ivy directly, in this case, I could have done something a lot more simple than I did, but it essentially just breaks up silhouettes a little bit. And we're talking about very low changes in value here in the render as well. Like everything is really compressed down to the bottom end of the spectrum. Just having the ivy to break stuff up, you know, they're around the roof trusses at the top, the arch trusses, and that just kind of breaks up the right hand side. There's also some around all of the lanterns. So it casts a little bit of speckled shadows. And it really does actually help things. And it also just hides some of the, um, some of the backs of the pipe work where we have the drain pipes going up and down the wall. It's just one of those little things which just, just adds a little thing. And of course, I try and add Easter eggs to things where I can. So Riaz, thank you for suggesting turning Suzanne into a blimp. We do have the uh, the searchlight from Suzanne floating above in the sky as well. That's basically it for this one. It was a simple but repetitive process of just positioning things, instancing things, positioning things, instancing things. Not a huge amount of actually making stuff. Whereas, you know, the, the flower shop, for example, that was a lot more bespoke making things and then instancing them. For this street scene, because I knew it was going to be really dark, I didn't have to worry too much about detail, didn't have to worry too much about shaders, didn't have to worry about really about anything. It was more just like making your main compositional elements and then a little bit of post-processing just to make sure that my levels were correct and then I had it set to black and white. Because I was using a volume as well, optics and open image denoising just do a horrible job. So actually exporting a noisy version, I think I did it with 2000 samples, so I did go for quite relatively to normal, quite high sample count. But then I denoised it in Affinity Photo in the developer mode. That got rid of like 99% of the noise and then it really smoothed things out in a way which it was uh, that was appropriate for this scene. And then I brought that back into Blender in the compositor, put that through a denoise node and that removed the last uh, the last few bits that were essentially just fireflies. And then I brought that back into Affinity Photo where I added back a little bit more consistent noise across the full thing. So there was a little bit of editing afterwards. So I can't claim that it was entirely done with Blender nodes. Could have done it inside the compositor, but the, uh, the compositor experience at the moment is just not great. But there we have it. That is how I set up this sort of Victorian noir street scene. Hope you enjoy and I'll see you in the next one.